Hello guys and welcome to my channel. Today's video is gonna be a kind of a recap of all the things you have to keep in mind when you're selling images online. So if this is the first time you're seeing one of my videos and you have this idea of creating a passive income by selling photos online, be sure to go to my channel Find the playlist how to sell photos online and watch those videos in the playlist because they will tell you in more detail what I'm gonna mention today. Also don't forget to subscribe because I'm gonna be making more videos on this subject as well as other Photoshop tutorials. So now let's move to our list of things you have to keep in mind if you want to sell photos online. First of all, create images that are either beautiful or useful or both. Now we all know what a beautiful image is. But what do I mean when I say a useful image? I mean the image that is not necessarily beautiful from the aesthetical point of view, but could be useful as an element in graphic design, for example, like these images here. They are not really beautiful photographs, but they can be used in various projects like banners, posters, flyers, or even combined with other images to create something new. When you start thinking about what kind of images to create for sale, you basically have two choices. You can decide to make images on various subjects, or you can try to find a specific subject you're going to specialize in. That subject can be food, nature, people, tourist locations, or anything else. Do a search on a few of the main stock photo websites like Shutterstock.com or Stock.Adobe.com with keywords relevant to the subject that interests you and check how strong the competition is. If you think that you can compete with the quality of images already offered there, go for it. If you think, however, that those images are better than the ones you can make, either move on to another subject or give it a try and see how it goes. The result might actually surprise you as you could discover that your images are not so bad at all. Number two, make sure your monitor is calibrated. If you don't know how to calibrate your monitor, click on the link in the card that just appeared on the top of this video or go to my channel and find a video how to calibrate your monitor. This is really important before you proceed with photo editing because you want your photo to look the same way on any kind of monitor. Number three, edit the photo to increase the aesthetic value of it but be careful not to decrease its quality by over-sharpening, over-saturating, too much noise reduction, or basically any other processing technique that could degrade the original quality of the photo. I talk about this in my video Stock Photography Requirements, so click on the link in the card that appeared above just now, or go to my channel, find this video and watch it if you still didn't. Number 4. If you want your images to be used commercially, be sure to remove all logos, brand names and all copyrighted objects from it. This doesn't apply to editorial images. What does this mean? This means that if you want other people to use your images in commercial purposes, for example to advertise or sell other products, you have full freedom to do whatever you want during the editing process. You can basically alter the look of those images more. Regarding logos, brand names and copyrighted objects, you can either remove them from the image completely or you can alter their look enough to be non-recognizable. If, however, you want people to buy the image for news and other editorial purposes, then you can't alter the image in a way to change the scene. For example, you can't erase objects from the image, not even brand names and logos. The only change you are allowed to make in this case is, for example, color correction, lightness and contrast, white balance and similar. Number 5. Add the title, description and keywords either in your photo editing software, another kind of software like Xpix, or manually on the website where you plan to sell the image. And, of course, be careful not to use spammy keywords or repetitive words in the description. Images that you want to sell for commercial purposes can have a free form in the title or description. Editorial images, however, have a strict form for the same. I will talk about that in some of the future videos, but for now let's focus on commercial images only. Number 6. Save the original file as Photoshop project with an extension PSD, so you can edit it later if needed. 
Remember this, always save your Photoshop files in native Photoshop format, because this way the original quality of the image will be kept as well as all the editing steps you applied. If you need to edit the photo again, you can simply open the file and do a small modification instead of doing everything from the beginning. Number 7. Save a JPEG version of the image with the highest quality setting and make sure your image is in RGB color mode. I talk about this in my video Stock Photography Requirements and you can access this video if you click on the card that appeared on the top just now or you can go to my channel and find this video. Just before saving a JPEG version, you can decide to shrink the image, but I don't advise you to shrink it to be smaller than 6.3 megapixels, and this step is optional, but it might help if the image was not in perfect focus or if there was some noise you couldn't get rid of. The size smaller than 6.3 megapixels is not accepted on all stock photo websites. Number 8. Get model release ready if there is a person on the photo or get property release ready if there is a private or protected property visible on the photo. You will need this for all commercial images containing people or private and protected property. For editorial images, however, you don't need any of these forms. You can just upload the photo. And the last, but the most important point, don't get overstressed if your photo gets rejected. Better sit and try to understand why it happened, or ask Dream Famer for he will help you. If you learned something new from this video, press that like button, leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe if you still didn't. You can also go to my website dreamframer.photography and see all of my tutorials over there, as well as some other photography related news, some of my pictures and some of the examples of before and after Photoshop editing. In the next video I'm gonna show you how to create a light box to take pictures of objects isolated on a white background with no money. See you soon, bye!